In this video, we will have a look at named pipes and unnamed pipes. We'll see what they are and how we can use them, and there will be two quick demonstrations. Using pipes in Linux is common practice. The basic idea is that some program has output that is placed on the pipe, and then there will be another program that will receive it by polling the pipe. Now let's start with unnamed pipes. Conceptually, they work like this. In this example, the ls process is forked by the user shell, as is the word count process. The output of the ls command is sent to the word count process via the unnamed pipe. And after the data has been dealt with, the processes will exit and the user will be able to run the next command. Now, how does that work at a lower level? In the situation without unnamed pipes, a user's process is connected to a terminal. This terminal, in this case a pseudo terminal, by default is used as the source for standard input and the destination for standard output and standard error. These relationships are realized by so-called file descriptors, which can be seen as process unique identifiers for input and output resources like terminals, sockets, regular files, etc. So whenever a user runs a shell, this process has a minimum of file descriptors 0, 1 and 2, where 0 is the standard input, 1 is the standard output and 2 is standard error. To demonstrate that, let's log into a Linux machine and check out these file descriptors first. So we run ps-f and we see our process ID. When we go to slash proc and then the process directory and then to the file descriptor directory, and we list that, we see that file descriptors 0, 1, and 2 are symbolically linked to pseudo terminal 1. Now the bash shell has an additional auxiliary file descriptor, 255, which it uses for internal communication. Uh, for this story, this is irrelevant, so we're going to ignore that. Let's focus on 0, 1, and 2. When you use unnamed pipes, this changes. The process that sends the data into the pipe will have the standard output file descriptor symbolically linked to an unnamed pipe and the receiving process will have the standard input file descriptor symbolically linked to the same unnamed pipe. Now let's demonstrate that. So I open two terminals and I run uh, ls pipe word count dash l. So as expected it gives us the number of files in this directory. Now there's not much we can inspect here because the processes are done in less than a second. But what if we would not process any data? Then both processes would not exit because there is no data to be processed. So if we would run the two commands that don't actually have output and input, I mean if we would simply go to sleep twice, like one hour and one hour and one second, then we've got an hour to investigate. So in the second terminal, we find the PIDs of these two processes. And let's look at the source process. So I cd to the file descriptor directory of that particular process, and I run ls-l and see that the standard output is symbolically linked to an unnamed pipe. And when we check the receiving process, we see that it is symbolically linked to the same unnamed pipe. And when we run list open files and get the information for the unnamed pipe, we see that the first process uses the pipe for writing and the second process will read from it. Also notice that this is a FIFO or first in first out device. So data that enters the pipe first will also be sent out first. Then when we interrupt with control C, the unnamed pipe will be released. So if we try and find it again, we will not find it anymore because it's gone. Now what about named pipes? A named pipe is exactly what it says. It's a pipe, but this time it has a name. With named pipes, the pipe will have to be created independently, and then a process like the ls command, for example, can redirect its output to the named pipe. And then another process, like the cat command, can be instructed to retrieve the data from the pipe. The command to create such a pipe is the mk command. Now I'm logged in as Rocky and create a pipe file in my login directory. So I run mkfifo my pipe. And when I list it, it tells me that a type of file is a pipe file. Now let's double check it. 
So I run file my pipe and I see that it is a named pipe. Now let's use output redirection to send some data into the pipe. So I run ls and redirect it to my pipe. Now we notice that our prompt is not returned, so the process is waiting for the output to be retrieved from the named pipe. And of course we can do that from another process like this. So I cat the mypipe file and then my prompt is returned and I see what was sent into the pipe. Now this may seem kind of weird to use named pipes like this, but in real life they can be very handy. Think of client-server communication, for example, or synchronizing processes, and I bet you can think of a lot more use cases for using named pipes. And unnamed pipes obviously are very, very common.